wingspan is a place full of birds. Your goal is to build a wonderful preserve that will lead you to victory. Learn new facts about birds. Blue jays can carry up to five acorns. Discover new species. Help them lay eggs. Gain food. Or even hunt. Become a bird enthusiast. Wingspan, a relaxing strategy game. Lavender Legal Center is a nonprofit providing legal representation and related advocacy by and for LGBTQ Iowans. Lavender provides direct representation advocacy, and referrals, with a priority for serving those with low income and LGBTQ youth. Lavender operates with four main core values. The first is equity, recognizing that legal aid and related advocacy are basic human rights. Second is inclusivity, providing equal access to services for those who are marginalized. Third is dignity, LGBTQ people are worthy of advocacy no matter their specific need for assistance. And fourth is compassion. LGBTQ people in need of legal services come to the matter with great vulnerability. To best serve those individuals and families, Lavender Legal Center must have concern and understanding for their sufferings. Your support of Lavender Legal Center helps further the mission to provide legal services, advocacy, and resources for the LGBTQ community. Together, we can build a more equitable, inclusive, dignified, and compassionate future. Wingspan is a place full of birds. Your goal is to build a wonderful preserve that will lead you to victory. Learn new facts about birds. Blue jays can carry up to five acorns. Discover new species. Help them lay eggs. Hello, and welcome to Role Play Give. We are a virtual tabletop gaming community. Although I say virtual tabletop gaming community, but a lot of us know each other in real life as well and play games at conventions and uh, at tables around wherever we can find each other. So we're a role playing game community uh, that also does try to do a little good around the world too. Uh, and by around the world, mostly we're talking about in our own neck of the world. But uh, anyway, uh, this uh, month, or not this month, this period, we are raising money for the Lavender League, which uh, provides legal services for LGBTQIA and economically disadvantaged youth in Iowa. Uh, and uh, they are in need of help for all of, well, I guess some of the laws that are making it a little difficult to exist in that state. Uh, if you happen to be 
lower income and or uh, you know in the community then uh, the, you might need those legal services you might need that help and so if you can we're not doing any fundraising tonight but uh, during our games if you pop in not just to mess up the game because that's fun too but also uh, <laughs> to uh, help out a great cause so that's what we're doing this uh, I guess until we raise enough money to call it good uh, but tonight uh, we are back doing our first building the Vishla in a long time we've had uh, some changeover in the uh, in, in, at the game and we got a new player coming in and I'm very excited to welcome Shane to uh, building the Vishla where he is bringing I, I, I got to look at it a little bit before we started the, the stream tonight a brand new species to Navishla. brand new uh, and I would say, I don't know that there's anything in uh, vanilla D&D like it either. Just yet. Maybe. I don't know. Somebody's probably done something, but but I don't know it. <laughs> so, it'd be new to us. So, this is exciting stuff. Shane, what are we drinking tonight? Uh, we are drinking a uh, uh, an old-fashioned uh, classic drink, a uh, real popular uh, out here where I'm at in Wisconsin. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. I'm not original, originally a Wisconsinite. I am, uh, I'm a Michigander. Uh, so I did not, uh, well, you're not initially, you're, you're not originally a Wisconsinite either, are you? Yeah. I'm from, uh, from New Mexico. Oh man. So, so this is, this is a reason to love Wisconsin, no matter where you're from. This, this, exactly. This yeah. Is delicious. So. They they the, the the only downside to them is they are easy to drink very fast. Yeah, I can attest to that. Yeah, because this That's... was full fifteen minutes ago. Yeah. Although I don't know how fast that really is. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Shane, tell us a little bit about yourself coming in uh, uh, to the game. Uh, I know you, but you know, just because this is going up on the YouTube's and stuff. Uh, my name is Shane. I've been, I don't know, I've been playing games for, you know, forever, like most of us. Yeah. Uh, or some of us, anyway. Uh, you know, played some in high school. Actually played a lot of Mech Warrior and Battletech in high school. We went we went way deep into that. And then took a long break. Uh, jumped in a little bit around the next play test and uh, had fun with that. And then um, that wasn't convenient anymore. And then went to a Gen Con with a buddy who had basically never gamed. It was right after... Uh, Right after Critical Role had come out, he's like, hey, let's go play some D&D. &D, and we jumped into some D&D &D games. Didn't have any, you know, just went to Gen Con. Didn't have tickets for anything. Just jumped into games. And and I went home from that. I'm like, I've got to start doing this again. And that was like, uh, what, August 2015, I think. And so, yeah, that's when I actually started playing online. Uh, back in the dark ages, it feels like, of playing D&D &D online uh, before before everyone got around to it. Um but yeah, and since then have put I don't know, played a lot of played a lot of games, go to conventions, meet great people. Um, but outside of that, uh, yeah, um, I do run games professionally um, for folks online, which is cool. Uh, that's kind of a, a bit of a side hustle, and then uh, and then uh, my main my main gig is I'm a I'm a stay at home parent. Uh, I've got two kiddos, uh, one in fourth grade, one just started middle school uh, in sixth grade, and so that's my that's my main gig up here in Wausau. They're pretty pretty cool kids. I got to meet them at the aforementioned conventions where we meet people yeah. and, and do things. So yeah, that's uh, that's great. I have a very similar story. I played in elementary school and then played Marvel superheroes and Rifts through high school. I remember Dude, Rifts. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. And Marvel superheroes for that matter. Yeah, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, those were my two main games, and then I fell off. And then around 2012, uh, my my wife Dusty got me a pathfinder beginner box and oh started, okay yeah. started playing again and then uh, got talked into running pathfinder i had kind of walked away from it again and then discovered 5e while playing pathfinder mm. and was like wait advantage disadvantage why why right. would you not do that um and right. uh <laughs> proficiency bonus takes care of just about every other plus and minus you need to worry about what what is this strange juju so, what witchcraft yeah and that's <laughs> and that's you know i think i started playing seriously around 2016 uh, nice around and that's oh. ever since then doing the crazy crazy thing uh 
right so cool well this is this is a homebrew world and i don't say it's my homebrew world because it, it really seriously is not uh i would say i'm responsible for about 33 percent of what's going on in here and what i what i what has happened was as i said hey i want to make a world where there are no dragons because the dragons are the deities so there are only 15 dragons and they represent the ones that are in fizz bands uh, okay the main the main food groups the Oops. chromatics the 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 <laughs> gems and the metallics uh and I don't, I also said I really don't want to deal with alignment. Uh, so the dragons aren't like, this dragon's evil and this dragon's good. Fair enough. Okay. This dragon is ambitious. This dragon is uh, the god of ambition. This is the uh, god, the dragon of violence. This is the dragon of this. But the, their, you know, violence could be in service of something, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so they just have a portfolio. They don't have. They don't have a. Um, an alignment per se. The other thing is, is they're like the Greek gods, and they wander among the people. Uh, cool. So it is not unheard of for somebody to have met, Ixalanthus, uh, the the bronze dragon god. That's. Not. That they, there are people who have met that that god. Um, the other sort of thing was I wanted the time to match the year that we were in when we started. So you'll note the year is 2022 of Navishla. I also don't mess around with 10 days or months or whatever. It's <laughs> Tuesday. <laughs> oh my god, that's awesome. <laughs> so... Uh, and the reason is just simplicity for note taking. This is a game to be played. I'm not. I mean, I do want an immersive world, but if we're sitting around going, "Oh, I called it Dornistag instead of Tuesday," I just didn't want to do that. <laughs> so, that's about it. Everything else, these interviews have created. So, one of the major powers in Navishla are the provisioner houses. There are four major houses that handle almost all the shipping and trade throughout the world, and they own cities. Those four cities uh, surround the Swanak Sea. No big deal. I, we don't need to get deep into the lore, but I want to just kind of go into the idea of that wasn't my idea. That was Winston's idea, because he wanted his character to be on the run from a major um, mafia-type but front-facing legitimate business concern and so he that was sort of what he wanted his character to be like he wanted them to not believe in the gods and to be ancestors uh, so they don't deal with dragons they believe in them but they don't deal with them they worship their ancestors and so he huh? wanted that to be the thing so that's that's a that's a, that's a case of the fact that magic comes from the elements came out of a conversation that Dusty wanted to be something like a Genasi, but she wanted to be born of. And so she created an entire mythology of how her character comes from the elements and some humanoid, and they are chosen to breed to make what's called a Mangene, uh, a, a Genasi, but it's called Mangene here. And those are, and they all have a different function. So she's an air mangin who are the spies and storytellers, and they wander the the Navishla, reporting back to the elements on the elemental plane of what's going on on the material plane. And so she developed that sort of storyline. So that's sort of what's come from this. Uh, Tony's character is. Uh, got a nordic uh scandinavian uh barbarian but they're shifters uh and so he oh, cool. he can only shift into a wolf form uh but it's partial and his he's on a vision quest that has failed and he can't return home until it succeeds uh so he, his story you know so that's the kind of and like so we we named the Vuori Mountains after where he's from. 
So that's oh nice. So that's how this comes about. There's still areas on here that you could just name, or you could say, "I like this area here," and I'll tell you if there's any lore that's already been created by somebody that makes that like have a little bit of sticking stickiness to it, or if you just or I'll just say it's yours to create. What, where do you, what do you want it to be like? Uh, so why don't we start with Tell me about your character. I'll say uh, I have a rough idea about my character. What I know more about is uh, like my character species, okay. uh, which I think is going to inform who he is or who they are uh, quite a bit. Um, I, I think the question really uh, is I, I, I'm looking at two different uh, I'm t looking at two two very different um, classes, okay. um, and I kind of have ideas for both, but I wanted to talk about which one would work best. Um, sure. Uh, both, you know, in you know, both in the world, obviously, you know, in the party, being cognizant that you know, kind of joining a group that already has some cohesion, um, uh, and I and I think it's and I think it's important at a table wall. Sometimes two people like that are both good at a thing can bring you know, but also like wanting to give everyone their place to shine. So trying to yeah. trying to yeah. fill in some cracks uh, or or some missing spaces because there's plenty of there's plenty of creativity and room with classes. So the two that I'm looking at, the first I'd originally thought about, I think this is probably my secondary option, um, was the Blood Hunter um, from Matt Mercer, uh, specifically because they have a thing called Order of the Lichen. Uh, and that is when I was still really playing with the idea of uh, being uh, being a were rat, um, you know, being a were creature. Uh, in the process of developing the um, in the process in the process of developing the species, I think I've moved away from the idea that they're were creatures. This is just its own thing, I, you know. So in the same way that like a tabaxi is not a were cat, it's just a tabaxi. Right. Um, this being a creature of um like a rat folk creature um uh, i think uh the the name that i i've really taken to is uh is whisker kin yeah um I like it. I it's like it a lot uh, yeah and it's it, because part of it is like i think that in the same way and i'm looking forward to playing the character because rats are so misunderstood and there's so many, and, 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 and like it's like, and it's kind of like it's like some rats, but not all rats, kind of thing. But like, yeah, they're gross, dirty sewer rats, you know. But rats are actually like extremely intelligent. They're actually extremely social. Um, um, like they don't do well by themselves. Like they really need like other rats if you're going to have them at a pet or whatever. They bond with people really well. They can form these great relationships. Um, you know, they're great at task solving and things like that. And so a lot of the wear, a lot of the lichen, like the lycanthropy really leads to creatures that gain like a natural strength, like they're bestial, like they're out of control, which this didn't feel like that character. This is more of the, um, uh, like the ratatouille type uh -huh. character, right? Like, like everyone there's a, and so I think, I think it'll be fun to, uh to to deal with deal with that social stigma i mean like let's lean into you know like the way people view rats is i think very much the way many species will view a rat person and then the actual character not being anything like that um so i think where i'm leaning apart from like and as much fun as it'd be to play the blood hunter and, and also part of it is just it's fun to play classes that i don't normally get to play um but i really think what i'm leaning towards is some kind of artificer. Um, and I got there because, like, to me, like, the, the, the defining characteristics of these whiskerkin is, the, is their intelligence. Um, they live in these colonies, and, and, and intelligence and, like, intellectual, um, like, uh, discovery is, is highly valued. And, and so, you know, then kind of looking at the 5e chassis or, you know, like looking for a chassis in 5e that supports an intelligence-based character is relatively limited, right? I mean, uh, now I will say the Blood Hunter does support it. There's like the Arcane Cleric kind of, um, but then really it's wizards and artificers. Yep. And so I like the idea of, you know, I think an artificer works with like this, like, like a tinker, um, you know, an innovator, um, all things, you know, uh, someone who's like an inherently a problem solver, 
Uh, and I think all of that fits really well with this species of, of whiskerkin, like this species of this rat folk species. So I think that's where I'm at if that feels good to you. Yeah, it feels, it, well, for one, I, I, you know, if it feels good to you, it's going to feel all right at the table, you know? Uh, that is basically how I feel about it. it everybody, yeah, you don't want to step on people's moments to shine, but also you got to like what you're playing. Uh, right. And But on top of that, and I really don't want to suggest this at all, but what was occurring to me, because when we when I first looked at what you sent me on the whisker can, I thought of ratatouille. And then oh, you, nice! And then you said nice. then you said artificer, <laughs> and I thought like a chef. Uh, you know, like, <laughs> and, but I don't think that's a great idea. I just, maybe maybe it could be it could be you know maybe you make food stuffs, but you, you take the chef feet or whatever. Mm. I don't know, but like, I I just was thinking you know. What an interesting! They chose Rat for that movie because of the inherent fear, prejudice, etc. And right, they right. into it very heavily in the movie, and then this very clever Rat teaches this rather inept human how to cook, uh, and I, uses all kinds of tools to do that. So right. I think, like, like if you does it work? Yeah, I, I think there's 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 media, there's uh, mass media, there's a. Uh, uh, there's a great example of how you know it doesn't have to be food oriented but that this this clever rat can make things that you know make their life easier make tools uh make interesting things from it uh I, that that tracks very well i think it's beautiful uh the question that i have uh unless there's something else we should talk about right out of that front oh no no i'm uh, i can so I, I just ask questions, by the way. I don't okay. until you ask me a question specifically. I mostly just ask you questions. Um, so they they haven't existed in a known way on this world. Um, it's 2022 of the known calendar. Are they known by anybody? Like other so, than yeah, uh, and I think, okay, so and it, it's in this, or... right, right, so, and I, uh, like, I actually, so in that, in that, that the shared doc, um, okay. yeah, there's a, a section at the bottom specifically with interaction with other races, so, I mean, I think inherently understanding that these Whisperkin are, um, uh, they, they, they are definitely communal in nature, uh, they very much live in colonies, uh, and they and they're tight knit colonies and and uh, colonies that function in the in the in the sense that they both they both support like personal expression, but at the same time there is an expectation that everyone's giving back uh, to the colony. Those are often intellectual pursuits, um, but those pursuits could be like uh, you know advancing agriculture, advancing uh, the um, like the architecture or you know, the ability to build um, these tunnels and such, because in my mind, these, uh, you know, a lot because of the stigma, um, they are also a very reclusive um, species, which would explain why no one's really seen them. Um, I think they live in these colonies, uh, but, and then as far as how they interact with other species, let me actually change that right quick. Um, the working hard to use <laughs> species instead of other words. Um, but yeah, I mean, so, you know, that, that, you know, like I have in here, like due to the history of mistrust, the, the whisker can, um, like they, they actively avoid contact with others, uh, other species, uh, preferring secrecy. Um, uh, they do have rare interactions, um, generally only when necessary. Um, and, and, and then it's very much, I, I think there are very much individuals within the whisker can society that have been trained uh, and tasked with being those like faces, basically, um, and mostly for trade and exchange. Um, and it, you know, I think they do bring in uh, some things. Um, uh, part of that exchange, I think, is uh, the people in the know might know about them, and part of what they trade for is. Um, you know, their society remaining secret to the vast majority of people out there. Gotcha. Um, 
Uh, and I think they do a lot of that through like an intellectual exchange. Um, you know, they share knowledge, um, ideas, um, but, but it's also all very surface. Like it, it's, it's a, it's, it's almost a very, uh, very cold exchange with other species. It's like, here's this idea, like, here's how to, uh, you know, better, better, you know, uh, better crop irrigation or something like that. And it's traded away as knowledge, but it's not like, Hey, come have dinner with us, do this thing. Like it's very much at like a, you know, a third party meeting site kind of, arms length. yeah, arms, arms length. length. Yeah. Um, gotcha. uh, yeah. So I think it's very much a culture of, you know, a secrecy. So I think one of the, and I, and I don't know exactly what it is yet, but obviously a huge, uh, part of this character, a huge, probably you know a huge driving force is like why are they outside of the colony yeah like why are they outside of the colony why are they on their the own question. Yep. um and i think to me I, so much of our fantasy trope is about people coming from like oh, all my parents are dead on this you know like yeah, the, yeah. this I, I really want to and that's why i'm not like haven't quite landed on i want to come up with a reason why like they've left on good terms like at the end of the day they're out doing a thing um, or trying to do a thing, you know, find, you know, for the colony so that they can bring it back. And so they're out in the world, interacting with the world, but inherently they still hold the values of, you know, the colony first. So this, this being out is a sacrifice that they're making, um, as, uh, as like kind of the, I don't want to say the chosen hero, but like as the chosen ambassador or the chosen one that needs to go out to, to do a thing. Um, and I think it probably ties into something that would be relatively cataclysmic to the Whisperkin society, uh, which I think is inherently very small. I mean, just, it, it kind of, I mean, you know, just, it's not just tens and thousands of, of Whisperkin, like, um, and so that, that, I think that's where I'm leaning with like why they're, you know, why they're out, um, and, and what they're trying to do. Uh, I'm not sure if there's something story-wise in the game currently that would you know would be like apocalyptic in nature or something they're trying to avoid <laughs> yeah there is um <laughs> uh, <laughs> but that but that doesn't have to be what you key into I'll, i will mm. tell you what it is right now um there are two things that have, have occurred they are related um the table game knows this more than the the online game uh the dragons are cycling out. They're dying earlier. They they have just discovered that the dragons actually go through like 200 year cycles where they go into a rest oh, okay. period and then they they rehatch. But they never they 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 don't. It, their time comes, and the other 14 are fine. But right now, three have passed. Okay. Um, and the eggs are not reappearing in the clutch where they're supposed to, which is this pan-dimensional space. Uh, and so the magic on Navishla, mat, uh, all divine magic comes from the dragons. All arcane magic comes from the elements. And arcane, oh, okay. arcane magic has been getting froofy because of some of the dragon stuff not arcane magic, divine magic, has been getting a little flustered out. And arcane magic has also been fluctuating because of this imbalance that's happening. Okay. The other thing that's happened is probably needs to remain... Well, not no, it doesn't need to remain a secret. There's another dimension that has been broached and there are people walking amongst the people of Navishla that are completely alien uh, they are shadow creatures that are entering the world for the first time uh, and so those two things have occurred the 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 shadowy creatures are called the tenebrae uh, and there's all kinds of I can go way in depth if that's the <laughs> if that's the way you choose to go I can give you more stuff that might have affected the Whiskerkin. 
okay. if that's the way you want to go with the shadow, if you want to go with the dragons, because right now the party is walking, like your character wouldn't know this, but they're walking around with a recovered dragon egg. Um, okay. So uh, they're trying to hide it. They know what they've got is priceless. Uh, and they're not looking at it as an altruistic thing. They're looking at it as a, we don't want to get caught with this thing. <laughs> um, uh, so, but also we can't just leave it there because it's worth like whatever. I mean, they're trying to figure out how to best profit from it is kind of what they were doing. Okay. Um, then they were waylaid by some of the provisioner houses that I had told you about earlier. Uh, okay. That's why their monk left because they're hot on his tail. Um, and that is where that story is. So those are two things that are happening in the world. Okay. Uh, there's also some history things. Um, 12 years ago, there was a worldwide coup uh, where a cult had grown large enough where and had insidiously and surreptitiously gained enough power where they on a certain day they all acted and nearly took over the world and they were all adherents of the blue dragon and so the blue dragon whose name is Makti uh, is not well loved on Navishla right now and those people who attempted the coup are hunted and tracked down and so that's a faction you might run into called the Barristers okay. of Nocragus who who hunt down these Makti people. I, I I'll get into the deed. I don't want to, you know, bog you down <laughs> with lore and shit. But also, just so you know, that's, there is a little bit of uncertainty in the world. But one thing I will say is, kind of like Faerun, there aren't really, like, a ton... Like, there are some places that here there'd be weird magics and stuff like that but for the most part this is settled world um okay and you know there are wildernesses still uh, just like there are in our world but f there there's it's as you can see there's not a whole lot of like unnamed spaces like uh right there are governments there are functioning governments there is worldwide trade it is a global society um, so that's, uh, that's another thing probably to know. Um, even though global trade is slow as crap because they're not using, you know, airplanes and <laughs> stuff like that, but like mass railways. <laughs> yeah. They don't have any, yeah. It's not ever on, um, in that, in that regard, it's not super high magic like that. So, uh, magic is also not. I like I like a relatively not necessarily low magic. I just like magic to be special. So like okay. so like if somebody's got magical stuff, that's cool. It's not like there's a five year old out there throwing out magic missile uh, because they learned it <laughs> they learned it in Sunday school. You know, it's 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 relatively rare doings. So uh, and that's that I think I think that gets to the main gist of it. So do you have place you'd like to have come from like does any part of the map just visually speak to you or because i can uh, add i'll add mountains i'll add swamps i'll add cities i'll add whatever you want um to make it your home like where the where your character is from i primarily see them like living underground okay um uh probably in a secluded area uh but something that would have like access to resources so you know they, they would you know there would you know need to be like now it could be underground the the water could absolutely be underground but you know uh you know whether it's whether it's different stone or or wood i mean things like that so like you know uh you know probably something near trees um, I think a mountain would make sense uh, as a, at least as like the the out the output of you know of of the colony. Uh, okay. 
Um, I. When you look, see at the map. I also, by the way, I sent you a link to the Foundry game. Oh right. And if you if you log in, and there's no password, so if a password shows up, delete it. It just for some reason <laughs> it always puts something in there, and uh, but then you can I can ping the map and you can see what I'm pointing at as well. Um, when we did this the first time, that hadn't occurred to me yet, and so we were all doing it like watching on Twitch, and the, you know, there's the 10 second. Oh gosh. Yeah. So, uh, but what uh, if you log into here, then I can actually do like pings and stuff and show you a little more. There we go. I see you popped in. Uh, you might not be able to see. Can you see? Oh, uh, player avatar. Oh, I can see. I can Thank see. You. Good. All right. So the game is taking place around here. Right, 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 right. Right, right here, sorry. Um, in the Donna Cam Empire. The table game is actually way over here in our vocal. So uh, oh. they are very separate. They have different tones and everything, but it's oh. happening in the same timeline, um, which sometimes causes me a little bit of... Uh, um, but... Uh, so, if your character's been out and about, like, I guess that would be, like, how long have you been out of the colony? Well, let's talk really, really quick. I like, I think I like the idea that, you know, the, the, the Whisperkin's, you know, magic works differently. I'd say, okay. you know, they're probably all primarily, like, artificers. So, it's that combination of, like, intelligence. So... Uh, going back, and I can't remember it. So, like, where where do you think that magic is coming from? If it's not purely, like, it's not purely arcane. Well, um, the way that I kind of described it to the players was the elements were here first. The dragons um, claimed dominion, and the elements, the elementals, who are called the Yuan Su, but we can go into that some other time. Uh, <laughs> self-banished uh, okay. and took themselves to the elemental planes, but they left pathways from the elements onto Navishla. And so there are, you don't have to worship the elements or anything. You just have to know how they work in order okay. to manipulate them magically. Um, and so druid magic works with the druid and like practical magic that I would say artificers are like practical magic kind of thing mm -hmm. uh, they just are using the materials around them and are able to convert their energy um, by okay. knowing how the four elements interact within it um, and I can see that being like a very sciencey thing for yeah. it's like you know like okay. literally like elements almost like like our modern understanding of elements and how yes. they work together yes. but you know but, Add but heat, heat you know, kind of hits that and becomes, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it becomes, you know, magical uh, at that point. So what what could be disrupting that? I think I think that's key to the Whiskerkin to society. That's for why you're leaving? Right. Like, that's what, like, there's something, like, something's happening. And so, you know, some, you know, so, you know, because I think the two, I mean, the two possibilities, I think, that really put the Whiskerkin, like, like the colonies, you know, and I, I imagine there's probably a couple. like s several colonies and they know of each other, but they're far enough away that, you know, every now and, you know, whatever, um, like, you know, maybe they have the great int moods or at some point, but, gotcha. you know, yeah. where they get together, but, you know, where the, but, but for, you know, so I think the two things would be either, either their, either their secrecy is in danger, right? And they just see that as being the end of, I mean, they they just don't they, they don't see life after that like um they're not trusted they'll be taken advantage of they'll be you know slaughtered whatever that's their belief uh anyway um so i think there's either that or something's messing with their ability to innovate to um you know to to do those things what if something you used to make got corrupted and you haven't figured out a way to uncorrupt it, and it's no longer useful, mm. and it's absolutely essential. Um, 
And I, I think that works, yeah. One of the, like, it would fit into several storylines for me, but it doesn't, I don't think need things to be this neat and tidy. So I'm just making a suggestion. Um, but what if some kind of agricultural growing thing, maybe even something you're dependent on for food, is messed up? And I think that's I think that's perfect. And, the, and and it was something that was alchemically produced. And right. the the Whiskerkin have this cultural knowledge of how to do this, like living in maybe places that don't actually lend themselves to agriculture very well. They have yeah, I think that's perfect. Like some kind of agricultural project that doesn't need the sun, maybe, yep. or you know, something something they can do underground. Yep. Um. Yep. Using a method, and now. That's, you know, maybe not like completely failed, but, you know, like the crops aren't yielding the way they should. Yep. And while things are okay today, you know, the the, the writing's on the wall that in, you know, Something. You know in not too long of a time, it's not going to be okay. One of the things that used to work is working less well. And with every single right. iteration, it works even slightly worse. I, yeah, I love it. Um, and that actually ties in both because the the, you know... The conclusion of that totally failing is they now have to come out of secrecy. They would have oh, to yeah. come live on sur on the surface. So it's yeah. really it's both. I mean, there's this is this is a big deal, uh, yeah. and so they've sent out you know I don't you know some word I you know uh, seekers or something come up with they've sent you know individuals out um, that have the necessary training or whatever to go out and find out. You know, and really the, the, the mission is like two or threefold. You know, why the hell is this happening? Can we stop it? Um, if we can't stop it, can we find a different solution? Uh, and then and then maybe th third prong would be if it fails and we have to go to the surface, we need to learn more about it so we know the best place to be. Yeah. Um, uh, I yeah. think that's great. Perfect. All right. Yeah, I like that a lot. Yeah, I like it too because it actually will bring you right into the storyline pretty quickly too. So it's well, nice. and if it's yeah, tidy's good. I uh, tidy's you know like even you know yeah, like well not tidy but yeah no, things that are gonna work are good. Things that dovetail yeah. Um, so uh, just to click you know a couple things. So for the campaign you are joining, uh, the game began. Oh, not there, right there. Let me um, jump over. Okay. Um, yeah, right there. And then they went into these mountains right here. Okay. Called the Crimson Tor Reach. And they have been, since that's where they discovered the egg and recovered it. And then they have since been, like, why won't this draw? I always pick the wrong thing. Uh, nope, not that. I want the draw -y thing. <laughs> uh, oh wow that made it huge but they've been following along the uh, eastern s slopes of the Crimson Tor Mountains and they're heading towards the city of Cloverdrum uh, so in fact I can move this over to here and that'll give you a little bit although Cloverdrum's not on this map which I think is funny uh but oh, this map I can't see on. Okay, let me turn the lights on. Uh, lighting. Let there be light. Global illumination. Save. Okay. Can you see now? Uh, no. Okay. That's because I have token vision selected. Okay. There we go. All right. Um, oh, okay. I remember where that is on the other map. Okay. So this is this is where the right? red clover drum. They they began their adventure in Crimson Witch, right? So, and they came through those mountains there. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So, uh, okay. uh, if that helps you get an idea of where they have been, now you can be from as far away as you want. It does set the timeline a little bit on how far could you travel since your quest was given you, your seeking was given. Right. So. Um. And it doesn't. Well, it looks like. Either. So the 
the the the the the ruling uh whomever of of the Donican Empire what are they like the Donican Empire is um are you um well uh historically I kind of see them as the Persian Empire um okay. they are they are very much absorbing things for economic reasons. They absorb land because they want this port. They absorb this land because they want this good. They are a hundred percent disinterested in uh, any kind of cultural orthodoxy. Um, Interesting. So they're not like you will follow. Because by the way, you know, ninety-five percent of the population. Because if your gods walk among you and people have met them. Uh, there's not a whole lot of faith problems there where people are coming in with different <laughs> faiths. Uh, but but they they aren't like they don't require people to dress a certain way or refer to any they don't even change they don't change much of even the ruling structure. Um, so one of the things historically that's happened is within the last six years this this area called Buxleydale, that was recently just annexed by the Donna Cam Empire. That, that where where this story is currently taking place is very relatively recently been annexed and it was annexed by uh, the nobles of Bugsy Dale, Dale going yes we want to join but the day to day people the people on the street super not happy about it so there is a little bit of um, political skullduggery that can occur it 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 was something I placed in there to see if people were really into it. So far, they haven't been, so I don't know how much it'll play. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, to go back to the big map here, um, just so you know, you get an idea. Ed's character is from no one knows where. Oh, where's that? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Tony's, <laughs> Tony's character is from up here. Timbuktu. Uh, uh, Percy's character is a water mangine who lives underwater in Adenac, which is an underground oh. water city. And uh, Chris Jones' character, because we can't just say Chris, uh, <laughs> is from the Quillfield Badlands, where he actually was a captive, and he escaped captivity and made his way down to Crimson Witch. He's a barbarian. Uh, Percy is a bard. Um, uh Tony is a druid shifter. And okay. Ed, I don't think, has revealed his class specifically. <laughs> so. All right. Although I think some guesses have been made based on battle maneuvers. He's not battle maneuvers, the technical term, but some maneuvers he has made during combat. Things, things he's done. It's been, been, I think, guessed and established, but I don't want to out it because he's having fun being very mysterioso. So. Leave it to Ed to be difficult. No, uh, so he's listening. Uh, so, so we'll see what he says. Oh, I know that there was a literally. There's the only reason I said it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he's gonna start sending you cheers though if we're not careful. Uh, I turned. That uh, off. I turned it off. For oh, did you really? You I got did. tired of that uh, bullshit. No, I don't mind it. The regular. Well, I uh, actually do mind it, but uh, uh, I, I like having it on. But there was no reason. Pe nobody was gonna resubscribe. Nobody was gonna donate during this. So I just oh, gotcha. was like, I'm not turning that. Oh, Makes sense. Ed wrote, "Hell yeah, okay." Uh, uh, so, I, I guess to me, um, I guess to me, the uh, I think it would make the most sense to put the colony, or at least the colony that I'm from. Yeah. Um, I mean, because I mean, they they have traded with like the government, and a big part that they're trading for is secrecy, and they're you know giving information that they found, um, and and and. Uh, so which, like, who would, you know, which, I guess, like, which ruling body would be the most likely for that to happen? Who would have kept them secret? Who, you know, kind of, yeah. Uh, okay. Well, we're going to go across the water here uh, to Ethraiku. Um, because... Nice, I see that on there. I will shift ping you. Or I will actually hit shift this time. There we go. 
and now I will draw all over the map. <laughs> um, okay. So this is a part of the world that there's only a couple things have been sort of um, like uh, been fleshed out on uh, because okay. the other campaign takes place way over here. Right, like the other, literally the other, the other side, side of forever. Of, okay. Yeah, uh, several things around here and up into the Swanick Sea. Those have been um, kind of carved out because um, Winston's character comes from over here. Uh, this stuff got fleshed out. So uh, the only things that are really known about this continent are that the Isle of Nocragus is here. And the un I will get into that in just a second. Uh, <laughs> that might be an interesting location for you to be at, but it may not. So uh, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about it in a second. Uh, and then Adenac is where Percy's from, which is underwater, which would probably not work for you. Um, but those are the only two things that are really known about this part of the world, really. Uh, I started fleshing it out because there was the possibility of traveling over to this side. So I was like, uh, I need to have some names here. <laughs> so that's actually all that's really known. Now, I did sort of lean into um, this idea that, you know, you can maybe tell by the language choices and the sounds of words that this has got sort of more of an Eastern Asian mm -hmm. feel to it. It doesn't. That's just the language choice. Uh, it doesn't have to be any cultural norms or anything like that. I just like the idea of varying up the fantasy sounds um, and not having them all sound like they come out of the middle of Britain um, or Germany. Uh, so, uh, so this this is uh, Ethraiku is a uh, majocracy is the one thing I know about it. Okay. It's a majocracy. They uh. They have an army of wizards. Oh. Uh, and so, uh, and they are uh, increasingly militaristic over the last decade. And they see the Donakam Empire as a threat. Um, but they prize, I, one of the reasons I thought it might be interesting for you is uh, they prize intelligence and mm -hmm. capability uh, and service. Uh, so perhaps they would find at least, and also large mountain chain. So I thought that might be, that is yet. Yeah, unknown. let's go for it. I think it's, I think that works perfectly. Now, the one thing then you would know about potentially on your travels is not Kragus. Not Kragus is a very important island on the Vishla. Uh, and the reason not Kragus is very important uh, is twofold but one of those is a make a history check kind of know it uh so i'm, I'm going to keep that one on the back pocket the other is that it's where a group of people met to decide to hunt down the remainders of that cult uh that took over the world 12 years ago and they are called the knights of nocragus and if you've read the wheel of time books or watched the show they are based on the white cloaks Oh dear God! Uh, so, <laughs> like a hundred percent based on the what? Like, no, are they? No, okay. they're more reasonable. Um, okay, less less burn the witch and they. Oh, thank you, Dawson's in the chat and said barristers. That's right, they are the barristers of Nacragus, and that's funny that I see that. Uh, that he, thank you, I appreciate that because actually I think it's Ed who named them. Um, but it was Ed and Daw who named them. And they 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 actually have trials. Uh, now they treat captives very badly, but they do ostensibly follow uh, legal court proceedings, and they don't go into parts of the con uh, parts of the world that they're not permitted to operate in. Uh, so, for example, in Irvokale, they have just been recently been granted. Uh, for the writ to be able to hunt down knights of Nocragus, knights of Mahdi, barristers of Nocragus. That's that's I get them smushed up in my head, <laughs> especially after a um, 
an old fashioned. Uh, but that's that's where the barristers come from. The other bit is actually a, a known in the world, but and your character might know it if you come from this area. And it is very magical based, and it's all, but it's also ancient history. It's from the year 100, uh, ish. Uh, and That's so, a hot minute ago. So it's. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> sounds lawyery, but not really. No, they 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 pretend to be lawyery. They're they're pretty much yeah. <laughs> but they the trials are lawyery, and some of their leadership don't suck. So, um, but a lot of them are thugs and brutes and people who like to make other people suffer. So, so yeah, based on the white clothes. Well, what about this this like mountain area over by what is it, Ishkam, Ishkam? Ishkam. Looks like it might be a capital. Okay. Sure. But I was I was thinking more like you know in this area. Ishkam in in Koshamad. Okay. I don't. I have done nothing about Koshamad. This would be completely one hundred percent new stuff. So, fine by me. If you want to come from there. Uh, and you tell me how much like if you're like you're they're secretive they're not necessarily ruling the place um but they they could be known to people in this area you do have the water you have the you have the mountains could even be sort of a preserve thing maybe that you know the the koshamad have decided that the whiskerkin can be in this area and keep other people away from it even um but all of that's possible. But I've done nothing with this except name a couple of places. Uh, I was sort of going with like an Indian type theme there, but it doesn't. Like I said, it's just then, just language choices. What is the G W A I? That's like even further out. Why? Because uh, this is a disc world, right? That's if I were right. This is it. No, it's actually it's a globe. It's a globe. Okay. If you note, if you note, it says Tiamun Ocean on this side, and it's Tiamun Ocean on the other side. Oh, sure enough. Okay. Uh, so yeah, you you can get over from Guai over to Malefirth. Yep. And what is Guai like? On that continent, the only thing I spent any time developing was Zethraiku. Um, oh, okay. So uh, Guai is, I think. What I had had sort of in mind was isolationist, uh, okay, and uh, secretive, uh, also slightly. Um, uh, I was I was thinking along the lines like to to cross some metaphors of not just like shogunate Japan, but cross that in with the Amish. Uh, so you've got <laughs> which, which the Amish are. You know, shogunate is highly militaristic, and the Amish are anti-military. But the idea being is, is we we stay in this era, and so they are about they are deliberately and on purpose choosing to be 500 years behind the time. Oh. Um. So, uh, and they have some skills and abilities to maintain that, but um, it is not. So it, it, it also isn't like strategically important at this time. Who knows if that could change? Um, but hasn't been, so people leave them alone, and they want it that way. So that's well, let's what I do, had in mind. Let's pick right here. <laughs> like okay. right in the middle of the three of those places. Okay. Where, I mean, clearly, like whatever's going on with Ithraiku, like, uh, you know, they're, they're fine leaving Gwai alone. Which is, you know, so they're not necessarily like expansionists, right? Yep. Um, no, I, I, I thank you. And I was just also thinking that, it, you know, you could get there by sea pretty easily, but you're not getting there over mountain very easily. Right. Uh, you've really just got that isthmus. And just as of now, Gwai doesn't seem to have anything anybody wants to take, and Gwai doesn't want to interact with anybody, so everybody just leaves them alone. Um, oh, no. So. Uh, so I'm gonna we'll just note this here. Uh, 
this font is too big. <laughs> For new text. Yeah. All right. But let me just take care of that quick because I'll put this on the actual real map later. But all right. Then that way I will remember where that goes. Cool. And so you have two rivers um, near you. You are, you could get to the sea in three out of four directions. You have lakes within eh, probably two days travel. Um, but the rivers are coming, those lakes are fed by rivers that come out of these mountains. So you've got fresh water. Yeah. Sounds like a good plan. And it seems remote. I think yes. that's, you know, yeah. I mean, I like to tie in with the, you know, the, uh, the folks that value, uh, intelligence and magic and innovation and the tie in with like kind of the, you know, the people that don't want anything to do with anybody. Yeah. I think that's, that sounds like a good, you know, not in the middle of like bustling cities and such. Perfect. All right. Well, we will make sure that goes on the map and then. How now you're fourth level when you're joining the campaign? Anything okay. uh, exciting happened to you on the way to? And I suppose I should tell you this: uh, there's the characters are currently he here. Okay. What is this? This is a, uh, this is me not making a oh, super man. great map, but um, <laughs> this is the village of That's White it. Abbey. Great map. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, that's yeah, okay. Um, but the uh, they are currently hanging out in a bar called the Lavender Lime. Three of them are. Uh, the Lavender Lime is right here. Uh, and the town appears to be beset with all kinds of interesting things. Um, okay. and the last thing they saw before we ended the session was a hand on glass and then it just drops and smears away from it uh, and people panic uh, they think it's a, a, a regular in the bar who didn't make it into the bar people are worried about it and they ended up going to bed in the inn that night after talking with the innkeeper who you know, basically just had a couple drinks with them and then let them know that it's gotten a little weird and white heavy lately. Uh, and I think that's where we left off. Um, so you would have, in order to bring you into the game, uh, we'd have to get you over to White Abbey. Do you do you foresee that? So when when is the next? It's actually when is the next session? It's the twentieth. Yep. Can you? So I would be. Yeah, I'll be able to join on the fourth of December. Okay. Do you? So do you foresee them being there? And then I'm good for the rest of. We don't. Because I haven't to, scheduled. If we can't do it this Monday, then we don't need to do this now. We can do this offline, and we can figure it all out. Okay. Uh, because most likely there'll be a, a clover drum on the fourth. Okay. And, yeah, I, they'll, and that'll make sense. Then they can finish up what they're doing in White Abbey, head down. Uh, to Decathorn and move over to Clover Drum. And I would say, I mean, for what would make sense, I think, one, because it would help fit how little all know about the world just compared to everyone else. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, just being very fresh off the boat. Sure. Because uh, Clover, Clover Drum was fairly... Good. Yeah, I mean, I could literally just be fresh off the boat. Yeah. Um, and so... I don't know a ton about, uh, you know, I'm sure that I've, you know, uh, well, you know, I'm sure that, the, you know, being prepped, like they, you know, these guest seekers or something like, you know, they've, you know, the, you know, been well prepped and read books and things like that. But as far as like actual experience or, um, you know, be new to this continent, I mean, I think that would work great. Okay. That's, that sounds like a good plan to me too. Um, so we'll have you meet them in Clover Drum 
and I like I guess at this point like do you have any other questions or things that we should flesh out that you feel like you need to know before you get jumping in or otherwise I think we've got where your characters you know a, a whole new species on on the planet uh, with a culture where your colonies from why you're leaving why you're adventuring and why you'll run into these fools yeah I think we're good I mean the only the only thing I need to do is figure out you know the actual artificer bits but I think I don't think that's yeah I don't I don't think that'll make a bunch of difference okay like the actual you know how the characters build but yeah no 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 i we would use standard 5e rules for it and I yeah yeah no like, it's, it's even when i say things fluctuate i do that more for flavor and i give like if there's a spell that won't work uh i hate the idea of people blowing a spell slot without um some warning so it, there won't be a like a Oh, it just doesn't work. Scratch off that spell. Um, if something happens with fluctuations, you'll be well advised that you feel like that's happening. Uh, okay. But it really shouldn't affect Artificer much anyway, the way that I have it conceptualized, So, and why it's happening. Which Sounds good. Yeah, I really need awesome. to kick through like which ones. I may, well, whatever. We, we'll talk about, we can talk about that offline. Okay. There's, yeah. yeah. However you want to do it is fine by me uh try not to tell people (laughs) how to play or what to play but uh i do like you know if there's a way that you can create something that adds to the world is really a lot of what you know and then the stuff oh and i will say this too uh once before we play before you play on the fourth the first time anything Mm -hmm. you want to change and write is you I won't tell you anything that's about your character or about it, anything else. But once we play, if you haven't told me, then it's mine to play with. So that's that's for the story. So, like, if you have a family and a brother and a sister, etc., the brother and the sister are my NPCs. Uh, yeah, and I should roll that up. Like, I should that's or, or come up, you know, maybe do some random tables or something just to figure out. Because I actually have it built in, like, our families are called... Our families are actually called mischiefs, and they're made up of that's awesome. uh, like an un, you know, like an undefined number and gender of adults that kind of co-parent, uh, like a, you know, several litters. I saw that. That's uh, really cool. Uh, so that'll be, but yeah, still, I mean, so there's a lot of options there, or you know, maybe maybe two even. I don't know. There might be some interesting things with. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna dig into this idea of 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 a seeker or whatever that specifically ends up being a little more, and I'll get that to you because there I think you know there might be some other seekers in the world you know very thinking even like like uh, like the Istari the the from 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 Tolkien right like you had Gandalf and Sauron there weren't very many of them but um, encountering another one was kind of a could be eventful um, yeah. Because they've, you know, you know, who knows, <laughs> you know, they've gone the way of Saruman and have, have you know, uh, 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 screwed off or, you know, they're half literally batshit crazy like Radagast, I don't know, something like. That would be cool. Interesting. Very cool. Well, I'm excited. I, I really got into, I really got into making the race like that was, or sorry, the species yeah, like right. that was. Uh, yeah, I, it's, I, I'm hit or miss with that. I'm trying to get rid of it, uh, but, you know, I played since 1981 it's rough right that's uh, but but I, I yeah i do like the move away from it <laughs> it's just hard to get my brain around it all the time uh but yeah that's yeah i, I mean i the whisker kin is super cool uh i'm hoping you choose because you you have in here size you are medium or small you get to choose and i was like i was hoping you pick small uh okay but that no you do what you want but i was like oh how fun we're rat so now yeah, I think small makes sense. Part of it, I was also I was trying to follow like the overall like you know the, since Tasha's like the overall how how species be- are presented from that. You can kind of be whatever you want. I figure you know the same with the you know the the you know ability scores like pick you know yeah. pick a two one or a one 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 like. Yep. Uh, so it's pretty open. Yeah. No, I think 
that's great. I like all of that stuff from Tasha's too. I just, uh, to me, I had it in my, started thinking about it as like secret of Nim style, like, kind oh, of nice. these really, these hyper intelligent rats creating this really cool underground and secretive society. And um, Exactly. Yeah. Like there's a lot of cool tropes to, to, yeah. to play off of with. Which is like you were saying, I was surprised there really aren't rat folk. I mean, not that I could find. That is surprising. Uh, you know, I mean, we're rats, but like as far as rat, I mean, there's lots of like homebrew and whatnot out there, but actual, I couldn't find any actual published material. Published by like people who actually do yeah. design and game test, yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, I, I think this, this looks really balanced to me, and I think it's great. So uh, I'm looking forward to see it in action. Uh, so, but, uh, otherwise I think, I think we've come to the conclusion. Did sadly. Little, <laughs> sadly. I know we only had one, uh, one of these guys. I might make another one and just hang out afterwards. Uh, but, uh, otherwise I think we'll call it, we'll call it a building to Vishla and, uh, thank everybody for coming out who stuck around and saw this. Uh, but, uh. Next time we're on stream is this Sunday. Sunday, Sunday. We're playing Esper Genesis in the morning. Uh, no money, but your Twitch subscription will get you your whole seat. But you're only going to need the edge. It'll be awesome. It's our it's session one. Uh, I think we're stealing a ship. I'm excited. Ed's running this game. And it occurred to me today that I was like, hey, I don't have to prep a game. I get to just play on Sunday. I'm pretty excited about it. Uh, That's then, a nice feeling. It's it's all right. It's all right. And then on Monday, we are playing Donna Cam. So uh, we'll see you back here for those games. Uh, until then, roll some dice, play some games, and give your time of treasure to, to uh, cause this that are meaningful for you. Have a good night, y'all. Let me turn that off.